you are here, just shout Amen. Amen. I want to thank the praise and worship as they take their seats. For me, it's time to the Lord this morning. Uh, it's a wonderful morning to us. It's a good day to us. Uh, this morning, in the presence of the Lord, I want to greet you all. May the good Lord do unto you as he has done unto the saints that have believed in him over centuries, over years. He has been faithful to the saints and he has given them life. Amen and amen. Uh, as I was praying and meditating, I was trying to think and to perceive what is a human being and what is human. Why do we refer to human beings as the image of God? And I realized that the human part of a being is more to do with the mindset. Because if a human being decides not to be human, can behave like any other animal. But the mindset of a man, that's where God trades on. The man is defined by what they think and how much do they guide their mind. For God to use you, you do not need to have experience. You need to have the right mindset. Because God works with people not because of their experience, but because of their mindset. That's why you see David managed to, to defeat Goliath. David had a mindset that said, ah, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who defiles the mighty armies of Israel? Meaning to say his mindset was geared as an Israelite, and he knew and he perceived that by being an Israelite, Meaning to say he had the right mindset. The Bible says, guard your heart more than any other thing that you can guard. Meaning to say the heart of a man, it depends from on your foundation. The mindset and the heart depends on your mind, on your origin or of your language. In most African languages, we refer to the mind. In the English context, they refer to the heart. The Bible says, when I perceived in my heart, meaning to say the heart does not perceive, but the mind, but you, they are the way the heart and mind, they are interchangeably used when it comes to think, thinking and perception. Romans 8, 7 says, because of the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Meaning to say there are two worlds, your body and your soul, of which if your body can't subject to your mind then or to your heart, then you are bound to sin. For the, for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. That's a Romans 8, 6. First Peter 1, 18 says, Therefore prepare your mindset for action to keep sober in the spirit. Fix your hope completely on grace, on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Christ, Jesus Christ. I shall read again. First Peter 1, 18. Therefore prepare your minds for action completely on the grace to be to the, to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Meaning to say your mindset can be prepared. Your mindset can be made ready. How do I prepare my mindset? That's where we need to come back to the word planning. When you write your vision, when you write your goals, when you write your, 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 your resolution, nine out of ten your resolution fight with your body. I normally write on my resolution or in my diet, I'm waking up at 12 to pray. When almost 5 to 12, 9 out of 10, if you are not careful, that's when you feel very deep sleep. You feel like sleeping. You feel like tired. If you tell yourself on Monday, I'm fasting, at 7 o'clock, you start to crave for porridge. You start to realize there's another pocket of oats that I did not open. You start to realize 
Christ, there is a KFC is very good. Why? Whatever you plan and you resolute with your mind, the flesh has habit of fighting it. That's where the word discipline kicks in. That's where the, the, where the, the, the word of God says, subject your flesh unto things of the spirit. Meaning to say, whatever you purpose in your mind, if you are not careful, you fight it yourself through the flesh. That's why you see Jesus knowing very well that he was supposed to go on the cross, save the people. He said in his prayer, Father, take this cup away from me. Not it be my will, but thy will. Meaning to say at that moment, flesh was feeling the pain. Flesh was feeling the affliction. Our mindset is so much central to your performance. But the mindset is prepared. The mindset is managed. The way you think you manage it. You purpose and you think and you manage it. Also comes to money. When you have money in your bank account, there's always temptation to use it otherwise. And people who do not have discipline, they realize that they've already spent money for basic needs on things that are not necessary. Why? The, you have a resolution. You know the purpose of the man. You know the usage of the man. But there's always another temptation to do other things. That's where you need discipline and subjecting your body and your habits to your resolution. So the mindset of a man is managed through making it a, a vows. Why do we need to make a vow before God? Why are we not just doing it and go the root of a vow? Why do I need to make a promise? On a wedding, why do I need to make a vow? A vow is that moment when you are subjecting your body to a promise that you need to keep. And that keeping the promise is not easy either. So many people say good things. So many people think about good things. But to action them, Peter is saying, action them, prepare for action. When God reveals secrets that are hidden in him and in his word, he does not reveal them to the flesh, but he reveals them to your mind. And your mind needs to take your flesh to where the mind is. God, when he does revelation to you, when he reveals things to you, he works through your heart and he reveals hidden secrets to you in your mindset for you to perceive, conceive it, and action it. Now discipline comes because it's a task that needs to be done. How do I get successful in Christ? I make resolution. I read the word of God, I conceive the word of God, and I action. I always ask people, especially young ones, what did you do this week? What did you do this week? If you do not ask your question, that question to you, to yourself, what did I do this week? You realize that weeks come and go without you doing anything. Months come and go without doing anything. Years come and go without doing anything. Wow, does the body get to work? The body gets to work when the mind has thought. And after those thoughts, you generate the thoughts into action. That's where your flesh kicks in. I was asking my coffee-old daughter, and said, Shannon, what did you do this week? Write a list of things that you have done this week in the past seven days. I just want to see what did you do. Then he said, I did laundry, I did. But I said, oh, it's ordinary. Is there anything new that you've done? I'm challenging here to conceive. I'm challenging here to do stuff. How does God work with people? God works with people that are already in movement. God does not work with people that are stagnant. When you want God to bless you and to use you, you need to be in motion. You need to be working. You need to be doing something. That's what makes God use you. I'm talking to someone this morning. I'm saying to you, for you to be blessed, for you to receive Christ, your mindset has to be ready to do something. Your mindset has to be in motion. How to 
Many people have this, this concept. At night, you have so many ideas. In the morning, you can't even remember. At night, you think, tomorrow I'm going to tell brother so and so this. I'm going to tell sister so and so this. I'm going to tell my mother this. I'm going to tell my neighbor this. When it's in the morning, on the day, on this day, when the day is starting, you start to think, should I, should I not? Should I, should I not? And many brilliant ideas, many revelations have come unto men, and men have not actually. Why? The mindset did not connect to action. The mindset did not transcend into action. So many times, as a pastor, God refused things to me. But if I do not perceive it on the revelation, after the thing has happened, you say, my God revealed to me this. This I should have stopped it. This I should have done it. The Lord has said this to me. But the moment you allow your mind to be idle, death pursues, and sin starts to work on you. When you allow your mind to be idle, God works with an active mind. Prepare your mind. Use your mind. Plan. Many people say to me, I do not have anything to do. And so many people wake up in the morning without anything to do. It's not like there's nothing to do. There's a plate of things to do, but your mind chooses to be idle. And it communicates with your body to also lay idle. There are so many, 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 many things that you can do. But if you do not push yourself to do it, I was challenging my, my children. The gate, the gate motor was not working. And they were asking me, who is going to fix the gate? I said, there's no school that trained people to fix the motor. It's there on YouTube. Just go on YouTube, search it. They opened the motor of the gate, motor put it, and that on the internet, YouTube tells them, only to realize that two plugs are off. The moment they opened YouTube, they went and reprogrammed the gate. Why? At first, it's not like there was no solution. The mind didn't want to think. You can actually make a prayer before God and say, God, reveal unto me what I want to do. Teach my mind to think. Reveal unto me things that make me make money. Reveal unto me things that make me fail. Reveal unto me me things that make me sin. Reveal unto me things that makes me big. When I don't want to be big, those are things of the mind. It's a many thing it's so it is, but a man ought to teach himself to think. A man ought to teach himself to think. A man ought to teach themselves to do stuff. There's nothing that a human body cannot do as long as the mind is telling the body to do it. Someone was asking me, Pastor, I can't drive. No one is teaching me to drive. I said, it's there on YouTube. It's there. Anything you there, the world is... And God sometimes if reveal things to you without even internet. God can reveal things to you in your sleep. Are you willing to do it? I was talking to one person come to me and she say, Pastor, I said, what's wrong? In, in the morning, in the night, I want the agent to pray, but I can't wake up. And this is the challenge of majority of us. We, we feel the urge to do good, but we don't just do the good. The urge to do it is there. The desire to do it is there. But the lacking component is for you to take your desire into action. The lacking component is for you to trans transfer your thoughts into action. Amen and amen. amen. The mind of a man. Read Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 says, Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may all agree and that there is no division among you, but you are, but that you, you, you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. Do you know, as a couple, as sisters, as families, it's your decision to fight or it's a decision to agree. People can purposefully uh, uh, choose to be aggressive, or people can purposefully choose to be positive. 
I went and visited two brothers. I called one and the other. Without them knowing where they were going, I just asked them to meet them at Wimpy for breakfast. Each one didn't know where they were. Why the pastor wanted to meet them at Wimpy? Their wives confided in me that it has been seven years they have never greeted or spoken to each other for one disagreement. One disagreement. They grew up together, same man. They grew up in the same room, but one disagreement. They have drifted them apart for seven complete years without greeting. If another one attend the funeral, the other one doesn't go. If the other one visits the house, the other one took the initiative to visit the house. The wife opened the gate of the other bride, but the other brother locked himself in the bedroom. Until the other one bid farewell. When we met at breakfast, I thought time to fight is here, to exchange blows. They met. I ordered my food. No one wanted to order theirs. They are all like angry and mad at each other. The judgment is I want to fix. The decision I want to humiliate. The decision I can that cannot be done to me. Then I broke the eyes and said, guys, I want you to hug each other and say sorry. I'm not here to listen to anything that happened in the past. Seven years is too long to hold on to something bad in your mind. It's eating you up. The other one stood up, the other one folded in his hands. Then I prayed and said, God, review unto them how much they miss each other. Then they embraced, we had tea. Now both brothers are coming to church, same church, this church, they come before the mass. What is it, what is it? Paul is writing to the Corinthians, brethren, choose to see, to have same judgment. It's something that you can prepare your mindset that whenever positive things are happening, I need to have self judgment with others. It's your decision that in family gatherings, in family meetings, at work, you do not always have other ideas different from others. There's some brother, there's a certain sister who always has other ideas. Whenever you plan something, they have always other ideas. They don't want to have self judgment. They don't want to see things in a positive way. They choose not to be positive. They choose not to appreciate the work of others. They choose not to appreciate the presence of others and the strong will, and they do not want to see in one accord. There's always in you that God wants in you, in your mind. Try to see, to have self judgment with others. Do not always have other ideas. Train your mind to have good judgment. Train your mind to see according to others. Feel for others. Think for others. Also consider others before you make your decision. For in the power of life lies in love and perfect judgment of other brethren. For you were not created alone, but you were created in a team. It's always positive and good to understand how to work with others. Look, Ephesians 4, 18 says, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Come back to the mind. When you are a born again Christian, do not be hard hearted. Always have a soft spot in you that understanding that we, the, you, the mind you have to is a human being was given the power to choose. You can choose to be negative or you can choose to be positive. Those that choose to be negative in their mindset, they attract the devil in his ways. Those that choose to be positive attract God and his powers and miracles. Anyone positive 
they are able to overcome their obstacles. Anyone negative, they are not able to overcome their obstacles because the power to overcome is in positivity. No matter what you are going through, no matter what is happening to you, positive mind is an asset to freedom. Anyone who has a positive mind, I, I, I was raised by my parents, but at a crucial point in my life, I had to stay with other people because of the limitations of certain things in our household. I've realized whenever you stay with people, it's your attitude that determines whether you enjoy the environment or you don't enjoy the environment. When you are positive and forthcoming, people accept you. When you are negative, all doors close. So many people, they hate other people. They don't understand the importance of other people. Why? It's not because of people around them. It's in the seed that is in them. They did not appreciate other people. They don't even appreciate a bar of water that is before them. They don't even appreciate the plate of, of food that is before them. They don't even appreciate even a good morning. Whatever they see, they see it negative. Your mindset is the strongest weapon to get you out of any situation and to open any door that you need to enter. A positive person always find his way or her way. A negative person always lose their way. Negativity destroys you. You need to work on your mind. It's a choice to choose to be positive. God does not work with the wicked, neither miracles received by the wicked. If you are positive and you train your mind to see good things, the Lord will bless you. Isaiah 43, 18 says, Do not call to the mind of former things or upon the things of the past. So many people are crippled. So many people are hurt. So many people are passing through hell. When they are alone, their imaginations, what they see is only in the past. It's a choice to look forward or to look backward. What is behind you is a set of memories, good and bad. What is behind you if you are 47 years old, you have 47 years worth of memories, bad and good, but you do not have things of the future if you do not perceive them. So many people stay in the past, they live in the past. Isaiah is saying, let's not spend much time on things of the past. You can spend the whole day thinking of our childhood, but you can never turn your history. You can never change your past. But you have power to change your future. Your thoughts must of the past must be small, and your thoughts of the future and imagination must be this wide. Do not spend the greater part of your thinking time on the past because that time can be you be useful for the future if 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 i have four hours a day to meditate and i spend the four hours thinking about my past what is it that i'm going to change but the same four hours i can spend the meditating about the future the moment you imagine you create when you create you pursue you cannot generate energy to fix the past unless you are revenging the only thing is either you are appreciating people who have done well to you or you are revenging people who have done wrong to you that is the only time you can spend on meditating on the past but the future you can meditate god is able to come into your thoughts influence your thoughts 
or fulfill your desires. The desire is not past. The desire is the future. God did not let me, God did not say in his will, let your past be known unto me. He said, let your desires be known unto me. Meaning to say, God is not interested in your past. God is interested in your future. God can bless your future, cannot bless your past. So train your mindset to do more of the future than the past. So many people, when they are alone and imagining or pondering, they are pondering the past. They are spending time on the past. Sometimes there are errors that you've done. Sometimes there are good things. If I have enjoyed the moment in the past, I can enjoy it again in the future. It's past. I need to think about the future. I need to think about tomorrow. I need to think about my future action. I need to think about my future movements. The word of God is encouraging us not to dwell or spend time mostly on things that have happened. What have I achieved, I've achieved. What I failed, I failed. I need to focus on the future. Your mindset, let it attract the future. Let it resonate with the future. Let it work on the future. Teach your mindset. I asked the first question in conclusion when I said, what is a human being? People are not considered better people because they are big in stature or they are small in stature. They are light colored or dark colored. They are, your physical appearance it's not what people remember most, but what do you do? If you say a name, people normally associate a name with what people do more than how they look. Whatever you produce out of you, that is what people want. Your stature, how you look, is not that much important. Can I repeat this? Whether big or small, short or tall, dark or light. Some would want to say ugly or beautiful depending on the person talking to or who is looking at you because it's a relative thing. What you could read, someone who could read, refer as not good looking, someone say, wow. So beauty is in the eyes of the world. But what I'm saying is all is not critical. All is not important. What do you think about and what do you produce that what makes a human being you can be big but not intimidating but very small but intimidating why what makes is the mind what people consider as the mind what do you do what do you do is an outcome of your mindset what you produce with your mind the lesson of the day or the teaching of the day when you go home, think, what am I thinking about? If what I'm thinking is fulfilled, what will I look like? If what I am imagining comes to life, if God fulfills my imaginations and my desires, what will be life like? What will change? Will that be positive or negative? I want you to go and give yourself a moment. Teach your mind to think. Think positive things. Look into the future. Define the future by your thoughts. Can we all stand and pray? Pray for your mind. Pray for things that you think. Pray for things that you imagine. Take, ask God to give you better imagination, better thinking, better reasoning, better revelation. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, I thank you for you saying unto us, in your way. As a man thinketh, so he is. Father, I ask you this morning, teach us to think. Let our mindsets be full of things that transforms life. Father, in your creation, you have given us dominion to rule the world and to rule the earth so that anything prepared upon the face of the earth may subject unto us. I pray that my mindset be that of an owner, a mindset that creates 
a mindset that attracts your favor. Whatever, Father, I think about and we think about, let it be things that attract your favor, attract, Father, your way into action, that we may transform your way into action, and the world may be transformed through our thoughts and through your inspiration in us. Father, I pray that my mind may think things that gives life in me, that there is life in me and life in people around me. Father, I worship you. I thank you. I welcome, Father, I exhort your name. Teach me to think. Teach me to understand. Reveal unto me the things of heaven that transforms the world and transforms my life for the glory of your name and for the exaltation of your kingdom. Father, I pray that you inspire me and people around me to think when we have thought about it, to subject our bodies unto our thoughts that we may please you and do things that makes your kingdom grow and your way be exalted. Father, we thank you this morning. All the glory and the honor we lend it back unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you in the next service. God bless you and continue to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. We may